हेलो एवरी वन माई सर डॉक्टर विश्ववीर सिंह आई एम अ जूनियर रेजिडेंट थर्ड ईयर फ्रॉम डॉक्टर डी वाई पाटिल मेडिकल कॉलेज एंड टूडे आई विल प्रेजेंटिंग अ केस सीरीज ऑन इंटरक्रीनियल लाइपोमास विच आई प्रिपेयर अंडर द गाइडेंस ऑफ डॉक्टर जेकब रीसेंट असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डी वाई पाटिल मेडिकल कॉलेज सो द एम इज टू प्रेजेंट अ पिक्टोग्राफिक रिव्यू ऑफ द स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ इंटरक्रीन लाइपोमा एंड टू डिस्क्राइब अदर एसोसिएटेड नॉमलीज एंड फीचर्स विद इट द मेथड वॉज रिट्रोस्पेक्टिवली वी टूक केसेज with ct mri reports stating intact cranial lipomas from a pax and the key major characteristics related to intracranial lipoma and associated anomalies were recorded so starting with my first case on t1 sagittal section we see a well defined uh, lesion in the frontal area uh, this appears t1 hyper intense uh, t2 hyper intense and uh, appears hypo intense on t1 fat sat the lesion is causing posterior displacement of the association fibers and we can see on flare that there, there, there is ventricular megaly so here the corpus callosum in t1 sag is not well visualized we can only see the rostrum and genu and the body isthmus and sphenium cannot be visualized we can see multiple linear hyperintensities extending from the lipoma through a small bony defect in the frontal bone to the superficial or subcutaneous plane which shows another t1 weighted hyperintensity a lipoma and here we see it to be a partial agenesis of the corpus callosum uh, with extracranial extension and we see corpus cephali the same lesion on swi sh shows peripheral signal dropout on pre and post contrast there is no enhancement on and on ct imaging we see that is the lesion is hypodense corresponding to low ct attenuation value of fat case 2 we see another a uh, lesion in the interhemispheric region with extension into the uh, right ventricle as seen on t1 core images the corpus callosum is not well visualized and on fat sat imaging it shows hypo intensity there is blooming seen on gre sequence uh, which can be due to peripheral calcification so here we see a peripheral uh, pericallosal interhemispheric fat containing lipoma which could be a dermoid with calcification uh, with associated partial or genesis disgenesis of the corpus callosum with associated interventricular lipoma or fat droplets due to rupture of dermoid coming to case 3 here on t1 sag and transverse section we can see a curvilinear lipoma in the posterior portion of the corpus callosum here and on transverse section we see curvilinear uh, lipoma in the posterior portion of the corpus callosum we can see another soft tissue density extending from the small bony defect Uh, which could be a meningoencephalocele on ct attenuation we can see that the region corresponds to low ct attenuation value of fat case 4 uh, we can see t1 weighted hyperintensity along the corpus callosum and in field to the splenium the same on uh, axial section can be seen in the corpus callosum region it shows uh, signal dropout on swi images and and correspondingly bright images on phase fifth case again we see another pericallosal uh, linear hyperintensity uh, which shows hyperintense signal on uh, transfer section as well and signal dropout on swi images case 6 we see Uh, a well defined hypo dense lesion in the false cerebri which is a false lipoma then in, again in uh, in case 7 we can see a well defined hyper dense lesion in the right quadrigeminal cistern corresponding to quadrigeminal plate lipoma then in case 8 we can see a triangular shaped hyper intensity well defined hyper intensity in the cerebri cerebri form plate which is a corresponding to cerebri form lipoma we have a case summary and uh, in this we can see that the first three cases in uh, the first which we saw corpus callosum lipoma with extracranial extension there was partial agenesis of corpus callosum along with corpus cephali then in the second case pericallosal interhemispheric lipoma with partial agenesis or disgenesis of corpus callosum and intraventricular lipoma then in third we saw curvilinear lipoma with the meningoencephalocele and the rest other cases did not have any associated anomaly coming to the discussion part we know that intracranial lipomas are tumors as such 
are not tumors as such but rather result of abnormal differentiation of the embryolo embryological uh, meninges primitiva they are frequently associated with abnormal development of adjacent structures and uh, location wise these can be distributed anywhere but there are certain regions which are more characteristic for example pericolosal lipoma 45% of the times which is associated with agenesis of the corpus callosum as we saw in the first two cases and it can be divided into two types morphologically that is tuber nodular and curvilinear then we have cordigeminal cisterns 25% of the cases then we have supracellular cistern lipoma 15% in cerebellar pontine angle lipomas, there is facial nerve and vestibular nerve tra traversing through the lipoma. And uh, there are sylvian and correct plexus lipoma which, is which are quite rare. So on CT, they typically appear as a non-enhancing mass with uniform fat density. As they have negative CT attenuation value. It has a lobulated soft mass appearance conforming to adjacent anatomy and there might be some peripheral calcification. On MRI, it appears as a MRI T1 hyperintense, T2 hyperintense, and there is no enhancement on post contrast. On fat set, it is hypo, uh, hypo intense and they might be blooming on SWI sequencing due to susceptibility artifact. Differential diagnosis uh, is essentially uh, those masses which have fat, for example, intracranial dermoid, intracranial teratoma, or there is lipomatous transformation of neoplasms, like PNET, which is primitive in usual. Uh, cranial tumor, ependymoma or glioma. On MRI, if fat set is not available, then we'll have to consider other uh, um, possibilities which have high T1 signal, for example, thrombosed berry aneurysm or white epidermoid, which is rare and will give diffusion restriction on DWI images. These are my references. Thank you.